Coming up tonight on YCN News. An act signed into law today by Vermont Governor Peter Shumlin will result in a continuation of insurance companies and policies in the state. Three tenants of a Lebanon multifamily building are without a home because of a fire this morning. And the 2014 New Hampshire High School Short Film Festival is now accepting submissions. For more news, weather, and sports, it's time for YCN, your local view. Now, your daily digest of the Dartmouth Lake Sunapee region, southern Vermont, and Windsor County. News, sports, weather, and all that is happening in our area. The news on YCN, your local view. Good evening, and welcome to this Wednesday edition of YCN News. I'm Rose Spillman. An act signed into law today by Vermont Governor Peter Shumlin will result in continuation of insurance companies and policies in the state. Under the Vermont Legacy Insurance Management Act, the law will benefit companies seeking insurance programs, and it will create jobs in the insurance industry, Shumlin says. Under this new act, Companies who no longer want to write certain commercial insurance policies will be able to transfer them to an insurance company that does. By transferring these commercial policies to another Vermont-based company, the interests of policyholders and insurance underwriters remains within the state. The law also requires LIMA companies to hold an annual meeting in Vermont. This means the state's tourism and hospitality sector also will benefit from the sales of hotel rooms and meals at local restaurants. All insurance policy transfers will be reviewed by the state's Department of Financial Regulation. Only business or commercial policies are affected. The new law does not permit writing personal insurance policies such as home, auto, life, health, or workers' compensation. Vermont Independent Senator Bernie Sanders spoke to Vermont lawmakers today, highlighting his interest in all things public education. Sanders spoke to the Vermont House and Senate Education Committees. Sanders favors universal pre-kindergarten and increased funding for higher education. There is perhaps no issue more important than how we educate our youth, Sanders said. I am very concerned that on many levels we are failing our youth, the senator said. In December, Vermont received $37 million in federal funds to bolster pre-kindergarten programs. Sanders said this is a good start. Still, he said, more needs to be done to encourage education measures before a child's fourth or fifth birthday. Turning his attention to college, Sanders said high tuition costs are burdening students. In New Hampshire news, three tenants of a Lebanon multifamily building on Mascoma Street Extension are without a place to live because of a fire this morning. Assistant Fire Department Chief Jeffrey Libby said no one was injured, including a cat found in a second sweep of the building. Firefighters responded to the 7.10 a.m. call at Renahan Meadows at 220 Mascoma Street Extension. Smoke was coming from one apartment unit. Firefighters did not see any visible fire. Moments later, Fire crews found the source of the fire in the laundry room. Smoke, heat, and water damage to one apartment is extensive, Libby reports in a press release. Other apartments sustained minor smoke and water damage. About 8.15 a.m., the fire was declared under control. Mutual aid to the Lebanon Fire Department came from the Lebanon Police Department and the Hanover and Hartford, Vermont Fire Departments. Meanwhile, the Canaan Fire Department provided coverage for Lebanon. A local office of the American Red Cross is working with the displaced tenants to find them shelter. Today's fire remains under investigation by the Lebanon Fire Department Prevention Division. When YCN News returns, we'll hear about Republican Senator Kelly Ayotte's meeting today in Claremont and the 2014 New Hampshire High School Film Festival. The YCN News continues in a moment. Welcome back to YCN News. I'm Rose Spillman. Republican Senator Kelly Ayotte held a town meeting today in Claremont. Senator Ayotte, who became in 2004 New Hampshire's first female attorney general, also traveled to Winchester and Hookset today, crossing the state to meet with residents from many communities. Today's meeting in Claremont was held in the Claremont Savings Bank's community room. Ayotte won election to the U.S. Senate in 2010 with 60 percent of the vote. Her committee assignments in D.C. include the Armed Services, 
budget, commerce, and an assignment to a special committee on aging. The Committee on Aging focuses on the changing demographics in the U.S., particularly as the needs of senior citizens need to be protected. This story goes out to all budding New Hampshire Steven Spielberg or Catherine Bigelow's fans. The New Hampshire Film and Television Office is now accepting submissions for the 2014 New Hampshire High School Short Film Festival. The festival is open to students now enrolled in grades 9 through 12 at New Hampshire public or private schools. Homeschooled students aged 14 to 18 also are eligible. There is no entry fee. Submissions do not have to be created as part of a school project. Teens, use your creative talents and inspiration. All entries cannot be longer than seven minutes, including titles and credits. Submissions must be postmarked on or before March 31st. The address to use is 19 Pillsbury Street in Concord, New Hampshire, 03301. Or they can also be hand-delivered to this location by 4 p.m. on March 31st. Films selected by a panel of film industry judges will be shown during the state's short film festival. This will be held at Red River Theaters in Concord beginning at noon on Saturday, May 24th. This year marks the seventh year of the state's high school short film festival. For more information, go to www.nhstudentfilm.com or contact them on Twitter at NH Culture. For more information about film and television production in New Hampshire, call 603-271-2220 or visit www.nhgov film. Welcome back to YCN News. I'm Rose Spillman. Now Matt McDonald will have a look at our weather for the next five days and he'll take a look at some local high school sports. Thanks Rose. Tomorrow will be sunny with highs in the 40s and a low of 31 degrees. Friday we're expecting freezing rain so be cautious when driving. We'll have a high of 44 degrees with lows in the 20s. Saturday we'll have cloudy skies with highs in the upper 40s and a low of 24 degrees. Sunday temperatures will drop to bring a high of 38 degrees and lows down in the teens. Monday temperatures will drop again to highs in the 20s and a low of 10 degrees, so don't forget to wear a warmer coat that day. If you're looking for something fun for the kids to do this weekend, check out the free kids ice fishing derby at Lake Todd in Bradford, New Hampshire this Sunday. The contest goes from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. with a free breakfast and lunch and is welcome to kids under 16. And now let's look at the mountain snow conditions brought to you by Ski New Hampshire. Tuesday, February 18th, and we're at Granite Gorge Ski Area, enjoying even more fresh snow falling. Over the past week, New Hampshire Ski Area has already received up to two feet of fresh snow, bringing smiles to the faces of our downhill and cross-country skiers. New Hampshire Ski Areas offer a little something for everyone in the family, and Granite Gorge is no exception. Granite Gorge is a great little spot, nestled away here, right near King, New Hampshire. Our guests can do lots of fun things. We can obviously ski or snowboard here on the hill. We also have a wonderful tubing park. They can sit and look out lounge, have something to eat, have a beverage, watch from our big windows to see what's going on. We've got cross-country skiing. We've got snowshoeing. We really love to cater to the families and people that come for that nice down-home feeling. All this natural snow piled on top of our man-made snow has made for possibly the best conditions we've had in years. This is what we all wait so patiently for. Hopefully you're getting out and enjoying it during the vacation period. Be sure to check out our February vacation guide at SkiNH.com with lodging and ticket deals, special events, and much more. Also be sure to visit SkiNH.com for the latest snow conditions, weather forecasts with lots of snow, 4th and 5th grade snow sports passports, mountain information, and so much more. 33 ski resorts, one stop, SkiNH.com. And now in local high school sports, we have a special story. Woodstock Union High School football coach Jim McLaughlin is to be inducted into the Vermont Principals Association Hall of Fame. 
Last year, McLaughlin retired from his long coaching career at Woodstock. He began coaching there in 1981 and has since won 211 games and took part in nine state championships. He certainly had an outstanding career. The induction ceremony is to take place on May 2nd at the Capitol Plaza Hotel in Montpelier, Vermont, where more than a dozen other coaches will be inducted. And now let's prepare for some boys basketball games happening tomorrow night, including the bitter rivalry between Sunapee and Newport. That game will take place at the Wheeler Gym at the Towell Elementary School at 7 p.m. Also, there will be a Mascoma vs. Winnesquam game hosted by Mascoma at 6.30 p.m. YCN News will have the results of these games tomorrow.